floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm on. So thank you very much for inviting me. I am really very, very happy to be here. Uh, happy birthday, Michelle. I am really happy to um, participate in celebrating Michelle's work. So I'm going to give a review. It's kind of, I would say, should be three talks by three different people because it's about three uh, reviewing three different related things. On the other hand, Dima Kaledin will supplement me in some way. So non-commutative crystal in cohomology. So maybe let me start. A is an associative algebra. And let me real briefly recall what uh, cyclic homology is. Maybe let me put it like this. And also, I will denote it like this. So it's either and Hochschild complex, or I use this notation following Galen Kohn. And then There are those face maps, which are either you take uh, to neighbors and write their product. And there is this special one where you permute and maybe importantly for me, I think there is also this cyclic permutation. And then again, importantly for me, it's There is this identity which will play some role, although I will have to be very brief in any case, but and so with this, I write a double complex. Maybe let me write it this way and it goes up. So there are infinitely many copies 
of B and infinitely many copies of B prime, where B is this alternated sum of uh, DJs. And if th this next, uh, the, the, the last one, which is kind of a bit different, if I omit this, I have another differential B prime. And now the horizontal things I have here I have I think n and here I have one minus tau where tau is negative one to the power n uh, t and n is one plus tau plus blah, 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 plus tau n. Okay, and then it's a double complex. I can take its diagonals and it's important that I take infinite diagonals Otherwise, in characteristic zero, I get uh, a contractible thing. In characteristic P, it's very interesting when you, you do take finite uh, sums instead of finite products over diagonals. And what I get is, I think the standard notation is CP of A and uh, but again, I I am so used to write it CC periodic of A that I will probably sometimes forget. So let me uh, reserve this, reserve both notations. And for those who knows, there are a little bit more refined things, namely, if I cut it like this, I get the cyclic complex. And if I cut it the other way, I get the negative cyclic complex. And for those who knows it's okay, for those who don't, I think periodic will be enough. And if I, again, sometime refer, sometimes refer to one of those, it's okay. Okay, and then it was apparent that uh, from the beginning that it's a good non commutative analog of, say, the RAM complex when uh, you are in characteristic zero. And actually, you proved with Fagin that In, correct, in characteristic zero,
we recover crystalline cohomology, which is, you, you can think about it. I mean, over C, you just get the topological, you know, singular cohomology of the underlying algebraic subspace of, uh, of the affine space. And also it was clear from the beginning that in characteristic P, you kind of get the wrong answer. And well, any probably perfect field, but for me, FP, You want some version of that, like what happens in, in crystalline cohomology, which lives over the p addicts or over the bit vectors. Okay, so, and for a while there was big pro progress. If you kind of really change the definition and go definitions and work with spectra and uh, algebras in spectra, ring spectra, of, uh, instead of just commutative algebras, instead of linear algebra. But then somehow it turned out that quite a bit of, of the theory also works in the context of linear algebra. And I am going to present three approaches very briefly and Dima will say more. The first is due to Petrov and Vologotsky, and their observation is that that uh, well, what do I mean over ZP? We are already over ZP because ZP maps to FP. So yes our algebra is an algebra over ZP. So why wouldn't we just take the same definition, but uh, in a derived sense, what does it mean? It means that that we replace our algebra with the flat algebra over ZP, but we resolve it now it's a differential graded algebra over ZP and you compute the same complex, uh, now it's a triple complex. It's B plus, uh, I'm using the wrong, you know, let me using some, <laughs>
let me then know the total differential in the periodic cyclic complex by, the, by this, uh, well, if you know, you know, otherwise it may look strange, by, 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 uh, by this combination little b plus u times big B, but also you now have D, which is the differential in R. So it's a triple complex. And you, you, you have seen it's kind of unbounded uh, in, in one degree it's unbounded in two other degrees it's homological. And what's wrong with that? Why, why wouldn't we take that? Well, let's consider an example when A is equal to FP. When A is equal to FP, it's a very simple uh, resolution, namely, yes, and probably one should complete periodically. It's a very simple resolution, namely you adjoin one uh, variable of degree minus one, but then it has to be quasi-isomorphic to FP. So the differential is The differential is P D over D psi. No, the, it's not a completed tensor product. I am just complete periodically everything, yeah. Okay, so or should I say CP? So my kind of scalars are this and I want to compare it to just Z, ZP, probably I complete. And one observes that and this is the, the shape of things to come that this differential is small and the periodic cyclic complex is very, very rigid. So actually as complexes, they, they are isomorphic. Okay. And this has an advantage that it clearly, you know, when Xi goes to zero, it maps to the periodic cyclic homology of ZP, which is just ZP itself. Well, to be correct, yeah, to be correct. So this U 
it, it never appeared in, in that definition of mine, but it's this shift by two that, that I observed. This kind of obvious the two periodic. Okay, and yeah. It's co-homo, uh, ah, it's homological degree too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's make it negative too. Yeah. Over, not over Q, there is torsion in the kernel. It will be P torsion. So there is a problem. And then <laughs> suggestion is that the correct answer would be Just, you know, well, throw away the, the kernel with all its torsion by tensoring, by tensoring uh, like this. And that's the idea, unfortunately, and kind of profoundly, this is not or this, uh, well, this is a non-commutative thing, but this is not a commutative algebra in any reasonable, in any, at least in any obvious sense. Reasonable, we can argue, but. So uh, we have a problem what to do and Petrov and Vologotsky, they resolve it very elegantly in some way. And it's also, it's very much related to recent works of uh, Molinos, uh, Robalo, and Toen, and also Arpon Raksit. About this filtered circle and the correct HKR in characteristic P. So I, I think I, I will stop here with this approach because I don't have time, but they have a very nice solution to this and they get an answer. So when the algebra over FP just admits a lifting to an algebra over ZP, they just get the periodic cyclic complex. Yeah. P should not be two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so second approach is uh, Dima Kaledins. And I will start with the free ZP module and
and I will use uh, E tilde for those and E without tilde for those, which are always reductions modulo P of some E tilde. And then maybe let me, N will be kind of Hochschild degree. So And I will, so manifestly it depends on, and it depends on and is, uh, Punctorial with respect to the bigger thing, the E tilde, but we will we use this notation because essentially it's, it's a functor of, of the lifting only. So it's a beautiful definition and the norm of course, yeah, this is the cyclic group acting by permutations and uh, Sigma is a generator of that. So it's just, well, the sum of all elements in that uh, cyclic group. And M, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so unfortunately, maybe a real quick example. Just to, it's not something mysterious, it's something very much under control. So let's. Let everything be two, you know, the prime, the, the number two, and then the number M and the number of generators then it's a very simple thing. So first of all, you have those and if you multiply them by four, you get zero because it becomes a norm, correct? And also, you have this sort of partial norm. If you have, <clears throat> yeah, you, you can always have, so to speak, a primitive uh, word of length, of length P, multiply it P times by itself, and then do the partial norm, correct, with P summons. And so if you do it twice, you will get the norm of x, y, x, y, which is zero, yeah? So it's some very, very natural thing. And this is the, <laughs> this is the pattern. This is like it is.
Okay, so unfortunately, So it's obviously uh, it's obviously factorial with respect to ZP module, but when you look at it, at the action of this morphism of ZP modules, it only depends on F modulo P and it's the manifestation or basically reformulation of uh, I think in the commutative world it's called Dworks lemma some congruence you know and this is this beautiful non-commutative I think a phenomenon also somehow known as Frobenius under the trace okay so Yeah, I really want to to basically to touch on one uh, side of uh, one phenomenon in this extremely brief presentation. So Yeah, so I have now, <laughs> and by the way, this I don't have time to say, but it's it's a very kind of natural thing if you if you look at it. Yeah, so. Passing to the limit <clears throat> with respect to M, with respect to the VIT uh, truncations, I get something over, you see those are clearly, you know, over some Z to the P to the, Z over P to the N, and this will be over the P addix. And And doing this stuff, well, it's important what T is. T is this beautiful thing that I don't have uh, time to say, but one can do it. Maybe Dima will say a bit more. And one gets a version of the periodic sacred complex as by the way of other complexes that I think neither Petrov Vologotsky nor I cannot get, I think. So he gets this and he gets good comparison theorems to the linear Lucy, for example, in the commutative case. I cannot say anything about that, but I would like to stress one thing. So I am not sure. It's an ugly notation. So I have this new uh, beautiful periodic cyclic complex. One thing that I want to stress to link to the next thing is what is its reduction modulo P? 
And as we have seen with uh, Vologodsky Petrov, more or less on the nose, it's just the periodic cyclic complex of this algebra over FP. More or less by definition it was. What do we get here? Well, here we have some big, uh, You don't get this, you, you get some big tensor powers, namely, We get quite a big thing, which is, I mean, just it will be a to the power n plus one to the power p to the m. And what I did here, I kind of, I, um, I uh, flipped those. And then I take, so, it looks intimidating, but so it looks like we have at every stage M the Hochschild complex of this much bigger algebra, which is the tensor product, the tensor big tensor power of my original algebra. And yes, it is, but when one follows the definition, it's twisted tensor product. So here, here you have cyclic shift sigma. And fortunately, or prominently, it is known that I mean, not individually, uh, uh, I don't have time, but as a complex, it is the same as, well, uh, equivalent to the usual Hochschild complex, which would be utterly different if there were no cyclic shift like that. And similarly for cyclic. And for cyclic. So those, uh, those invariants kind of complicate the picture. I think maybe Dima will, uh, will say more, but again, it has this strong flavor. It's a very, very different definition, but uh, it's something whose reduction modulo p is some bigger complex computing again the uh, the usual thing for a and this brings me to to the next not the next slide well the, the next part of the talk very briefly i would maybe i would also say that There is also Hochschild cohomology, which I will briefly mention next. And one, one also has this, and this is very important 
for for this story, for the comparison of what I am saying to, to the next uh, attempt, but also it's crucial, maybe it will appear on Thursday, I don't know, it's crucial for, you know, Kansevich Vlasopoulos Takeda theory of uh, the formations of Kalabiyao and pre Kalabiyao algebras categories. And so let me just mention it and keep it. And now really quick, let me, men let me mention the third attempt or the third approach. So maybe reference, I will post it on the archive, I guess, right after the conference. But you can see it on my page. And the idea is this, that Oops. So lift it somehow, you know, to a module again, like uh, well, like Dima does. But then instead of taking vit and uh, non-commutative vit vectors, just write down the complex. Instead, again, maybe instead, maybe you know it's better to do it with a bigger standard model, but I think that model is is also fine. So let me skip that and then. Yeah, by the way, uh, lift product somehow. And it will be associative modulo P. So formally, we can still do this. If you look at the formulas, uh, a lot of them just involve cyclic permutations. They, they don't even require any product or So uh, we will get something with well periodically small curvature. So it's better again to complete it periodically. And I claim that we can canonically, again, canonically in some weaker but still quite strong sense, we can flatten it, namely add some terms to make it square zero. And let me reel, you know, a couple of minutes and I'm done. And
let me conspicuously not erase that. So my A, well, I mean, I want it for any A, but at least here, I mean, for an associative algebra, it's a Gigli algebra without, uh, well, you can view it as a background, you can view it as an algebra with zero multiplication. So it's a graded Li algebra. And M and If you have not seen it, probably you have, but an independent definition of this is actually the one I do need. So it's any A just over any K. Its correct definition is that from an algebra you produce a coalgebra and then take its co-derivations and so it acts on bar of A and immediately you see that it's morphism of DG algebras, And then you can apply uh, CC periodic to all that. So what am I uh, skipping? First of all, for co-algebras, you can apply, uh, you can do the same uh, constructions, but dual, you know, everywhere instead of product, you have co-product and you reverse the arrows. So you get those complexes and then, well, it's kind of monoidal enough. It, uh, it respects multiplication, tensor multiplication enough. So you conclude and I conclude that that some periodic cyclic, that first of all, this is an A infinity algebra, and this is an A infinity module over that. And by another theorem of 
Fagan and me, but also of uh, Quillen. This is, uh, so this you do for co-algebras, this you do for algebras, and there is a quasi-canonical quasi-isomorphism. So we kind of isolated an algebra of operations that act on periodic cyclic complexes and working within that, we can recover our, you know, canonical flattening of the differential. And again, well, modulo P, it's automatically the periodic cyclic complex of the FP algebra. And there I think is the hint to, appro to uh, connect the two approaches of Dima and, and also maybe of Petrova Logotsky and of this kind of develop develop the theory of operations in bigger generality and I think it will kind of come. Okay, thank you very much.